Greetings, Pilgrims, and welcome to another episode of the Polygon Pilgrimage, and today we are returning to our weapon switching. I apologize that I have been kind of ill. It took me a while to get this going, but here we are again, and we're going to finish it up today, okay? Now, I know from the last time we saw this, you might look at this and go, oh my god, what, what happened here? This is all crazy. Don't worry about it. We're going to step through it. I found a better way to do things. So as usual, when I go to do a video like this, you guys ask for something and I go to research it, there's usually a Brachy's tutorial on how to do it. So of course there's one for this, right? Because he's amazing. So what I'm going to show you is the code, and our code here, the first 80% of it, all of this here, is from his tutorial. So if you want to understand how this works, I'm actually not going to go over it. You should go to his channel. He deserves all the credit. There will be a link in the description on how to go and figure out this part of it. And then the part that I've done is this part of the end here and the stuff you saw inside of Unity. Now, the reason for this is his tutorial, while great, all it does is turn objects on or off. But when you look at these modern games, when I go to put a gun away to bring out the next gun, that's an animation we have to play. So that's the part I'll be helping you with today, okay? So following his tutorial, essentially here, we are using either the mouse wheel or we are using buttons, one, two, three, four, five, however many guns you have, to cycle through and turn on or off your different weapons. So let's take a look at that and then I'll show you where we come in here. So I hit play in our little scene here. Our little pistol comes up. And if I hit two, it goes to the next gun. If I hit three, it goes to the third gun. Now if I hit one, it jumps back to the first gun, okay? So all his does is turn them on or off. So what I'm gonna show you how to do is how to actually spawn these animations. And you can see the animation controller at the bottom there doing its thing. All right, so that's what we're gonna talk about today. So our code takes over in a couple places. At the top, we have some additional variables here. No big deal. We're just getting handles of things and setting some values, some friendly names to words instead of typing the number over and over again. We're initializing some things. And then here, this start coroutine. This is an important thing. A coroutine is a piece of code that is kind of constantly running and it's checking for a condition. So you don't have to keep saying if, 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 you just say it's always running and then when I call it, do a thing, okay? Then down here, this is our actual code that we added for all of this. So when we call our select weapon function, we're gonna tell it what is our current weapon and what was our previous weapon. Now at the time that we call this, the previous weapon is the one we are currently holding, which I know is confusing, because it's going to become the previous and the new one is gonna become the current, all right? So as the note here says, the order of this is very important. So this preanim is an animator up here that we have uh, parameterized. And then down here, we're gonna say preanim equals the get component animator of our previous, which is the gun we are holding right now as we are putting it away. And we're gonna say, go ahead and set the float of weapon state to holster. Say so we're gonna put this gun away. Cool. Now, we're gonna call our function here and say, okay, good. Now we're gonna wait for the next animation to occur. And this is just a wait statement down here and say, call this. This wait for seconds doesn't really seem to be working, but it's not really causing a problem. I'll show you what we're talking about. Then we're gonna say our selected weapon is equal to the current weapon, because now the new one we have pulled out or are about to pull out right here is about to be the current weapon. So then I'm gonna say, okay, grab our current weapon and set its value equal to true, turn it on. And then we're going to say, okay, now grab its animator, set its weapon state to equip, meaning pull that weapon out. And our function down here, you see animation wait, animation wait, that's the thing that we did to start coroutine at the top. We said, let's make sure this is running. Now I come down here and say, call this function. And when I call this function, while this is true, normalize time, less than length, blah, 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 it's saying, wait for the animation to finish playing then wait a little bit of time and then return to this spot right here and continue to do your thing. This is the part that doesn't really seem to be working, but I wanted to give it to you anyway. And I want to open up it as a challenge to you guys to see if you can solve the problem that we're still having. You may not have seen the problem yet, but I'm going to show it to you. Okay. So with all of that said, this is the only change of code that we need. And yes, I will provide the script. But again, I, like I said, I'm not going to explain this up here because this is Bracky's work and he deserves the credit. So go learn from him. I do almost every day. So go learn from him and then I will give you a little piece here at the end that you need. Cool, so with that code all set, if we go into our project and take a look at the code, the code is right here. It's called weaponswitching.cs and we can put that under our FPS controller 
first person character, we have a weapon slots object, and we put it right there. Just drag it right there once it's compiled. Okay, now, you might be saying, that's all well and good, but what about all this in here? No worries, remember last time we had this nice little loop down here, this bottom part might look familiar. And we were saying, oh, if you check these boxes or change these values, it will go to different states. But up here is where we made some changes. Now, I was having a lot of issues with this any state. Any state is actually kind of a pain. So instead, I used an empty state, and I called it hub, right here. So the idea is, from entry, when we come to a weapon, we're going to immediately go to the holstered state. And holstered is the very last frame of holster. So to holster the gun, you put it away. Then holstered is that final frame just repeated. And we'll look at some of these animations. I'll show you. So we go to holstered, and then we go to hub right away, no conditions. And in hub, we go to equip if our weapon state is less than 2 but greater than 0. So the only number that is greater than 0 or less than 2 when dealing with whole numbers, yes, I know they're floats, is 1, right? That's the only number that can fit in between there. So when our weapon state is 1, we're going to go to the equip state. Then it's going to go right to idle, and there we go, we're in idle. Now, from idle, we're going to go only to holster to put the gun away if we go to weapon state 2, which you can see here, our branch here says, if the weapon state is less than 3 but greater than 1, what's the only number that fits there? 2. So if it's 2, go to this and play the holster animation. Put it away. And I changed the speed to minus 2 to make it really quick and it still doesn't solve our problem. Then from here, we're going to go over here to holstered, and that's if this state is correct, which is the same thing, just reversed here. Less than 3 but greater than 1, 2. So we're going to go over here and say we are holstered. Then we switch to the other weapon and we come in to holstered, immediately go to hub, and immediately check our conditions. And by passing the value back and forth, we can change this. So here's the flow. I have my pistol out, and I say press 2. I want to go to the second weapon. It's going to go here to holster, put the weapon away, and go to the holstered state, and then turn off the pistol. Then I'm going to switch to the AK, which is weapon 2, and the AK comes in holstered, so it's away, so it's below the screen so we don't see it. And then it goes to hub, and it says, hey, my weapon state is, I was told to be 1. I was told to be active. What should I do? Well, you're less than... 2, correct. You're greater than 0, correct. You go to the equip. You pull the gun out. And that's just what happens with each one. You put the first one away, and then you pull out the second one. That's really all it is. So let's take a look. So if I hit play, and there we go. So the pistol is out, and if I hit 2, I put the pistol away, and the, uh, the AK comes out. If I hit 3, if I hit 1, if I hit 2, if I hit 1, if I hit 3, I can switch around between them. Now, the eagle-eyed among you will have noticed by now the issue that we have with the animations. And again, this is something that I've not been able to solve, so I want to get the community's help and we can solve it together. If I hit one and then three, look what happens. You can get A into a weird state, and it is possible to pull out more, more than one gun and have multiple arms that you shouldn't have as a human being. <laughs> so there's a little bit of an overlap and things are stepping on each other, and I've been trying to solve this issue for quite some time, and I've gone through lots of iterations, and I just still cannot figure it out. But rather than delay the episode even further, I wanted to give this to you guys and show you what I've done so far, and give you kind of my research, and then together we can possibly solve it. Okay, so to begin, what we're going to do here is look at the changes we've made to this with the animations. So if I pull up the animation... What we have here are the various animations we've made for all of the different objects. So if I go to Pistol, let's focus on that guy. His equip animation is rather quick. As you can see here, it's 30, which is like, that's a little less than a second. I think 60 is one second, so this is half a second. So it's just a quick little pullout animation. And you do need certain animations. So if I look at my huge list, so we have ADS, which is aim down sights. ADS fire, which is like a scoped fire. Equip. Hip fire, holstered, idle, run, and start run. And as we explained before, the start run is because we need to get into that running state before we just start running. If we run right from here, it's going to look weird. So you do need each of these animations for all of your weapons. Okay? Then I'll show you a little trick here. So what you can actually do is, once you've created this for one weapon, you can just go in here and you can duplicate these 
rename them, bring them in and change them. So I'll show you here, we have the AK slot selected. So this is for this weapon, the AK. But as you can see, it's clearly a copy and paste job. And I left it this way on purpose to show you. So if I select AK slot and I look at it here, I go, wait a minute, this says weapons rifle holster. This, that's not right. But if I click it, you'll notice I changed the motion, which is what animation are you playing, to weapons AK. And then the name here can be whatever you want. So I can just change this to say AK. So AK. Boom. Which is great news. That means that you only have to set this up once. And then go over here and select one and hit Control D. And that will duplicate it. See, it says AK slot 2. And say I was going to add my sniper. I could say sniper rifle. And now I have a brand new one that I have this selected. And now all I have to do is click each of these click here and find my sniper rifle animation and put it in there. I haven't made them for this example, but that's what you would do is just go th through here and it's all labeled for you, equip. Okay, I need an equip animation for my sniper rifle and then I click here and say assign it. Boom, and once you've done that, the rest of this is all set up. Now let me go over these values for you to make sure you understand these values. This weapon state, this is a float. So you need to go up here under parameters, click, float, call it weapon state, just like this, capital W, capital S. Then for each of these connections, here is the setup. So from entry, your default state is holstered, and this will play the holstered animation. From there, we are going to make a connection. So right click, make transition to a hub state. This hub is just an empty state. So if you just right click and say create state empty, and I just named it hub, so you can name it, you know, starting whatever you want to call it okay so there's no condition there we go right to here and this is where all the decision making takes place this condition you just click here plus condition you're going to have to add more than one so it's going to be weapon state less than two weapon state greater than zero and that's from hub to equip from equip equip rather to idle excuse me there is none we just go straight into that okay then from idle we're going to go up to holster and this is the Equip animation right here, but played in reverse. So any negative number here, negative one, it's just completely reverse. Negative two, I put here, it's twice as twice the speed and reverse. So that, that's just how we did it. Instead of making an unequip and an equip, we just reuse that. So our condition here is very important. Our condition from idle to holster is weapon state is less than three and weapon state is greater than one. And to change these, you just click this drop down and you can choose and you click this drop down, you can choose from any of the variables you have over here. And that's really it. So this condition is important, less than two, greater than zero, to go from hub to equip. And to go from idle to holster, this condition is less than three, greater than one. Then this condition is the same thing, greater than one, less than three, that's the same thing, just reversed, to go back to holstered. Now this is the important part here, it's from entry to holstered, this is your default state. So what that means is if I make a connection to this, you notice how this is a different color. If I say set as layer default state, that's what sets it to that color, okay? And you can only have one default state, so make sure it's this one, holstered. And there you go, you're all set. So I hope you guys have enjoyed very much. I apologize for the delay once again, but I thank you so much for sticking with me. And as always guys, keep practicing, get better, and I'll see you next time as the pilgrimage continues.